John Erickson here and we are going to look at the head movement of Ben Hogan. So there's a camp of thought that the head should stay as stationary as possible and that into even into the finish that the spine should remain tilted over to minimize head movement and this sort of thing. So uh, given that Hogan wasn't real tall, 5'8", 5'7", 5'8", um, didn't really need to move his head up as much as a taller player would if you're going to try and access the uh, flatter lie angles. So here we can see that the head moves up significantly, the spine and torso becomes much more erect into the finish. And this is all by design and this is proper. Uh, you're going to gain more power this way and more accuracy because you're going to use the torso to keep the shaft moving low left and around into the finish, keep it on plane through the strike, and you would do this through the uh, motion of the torso becoming uh, more upright into the finish. So it's a significant amount here, and uh, I've got to agree with what George Knudsen said several times. The head is not the center of the swing, it goes where it goes. That's a quote from, from George. So interesting to see the down the line view here. Um, excellent application here. And the head is moving quite a bit. And the torso is coming uh, to a much more uh, erect final position. Now we're going to look at some earlier footage. <clears throat> Here's Hogan ripping a driver. So the first frame here can show that the head moves back. From right here to here, the head slides back because he's transferring his weight over to his right foot. Therefore, the head, it has to go back. We saw this a lot with uh, Curtis Strange in the 80s winning back-to-back -back U.S. Opens with his big head slide to the back. Then we can see from the back position, it moves forward because he's moving laterally and that's going to move the head forward and then of course it moves up into the finish so the head from address address moves back moves forward through the strike and up and this is exactly what we would expect to see the head's moving all over the place but it's moving all over all over the place in the right way so here we would just see the three points as far back to his right as it gets uh, as far down and laterally as it gets into the downswing and then of course up into his finish. So you can see the head moves not only down but it moves laterally, significant lateral move and then up into his finish. Really kind of creates a, a V which would make sense because you're going to load down, you're going to move laterally and then you're going to come up. But it's important to note here that he doesn't lose his spine tilt. So from near the top of his backswing just prior to the strike he maintains that spine tilt, but that whole spine tilt moves laterally. It doesn't come up and out of it. Those shoulders remain very, very closed into the downswing before he leverages off the ground and pushes up into his finish. And then we've seen from the down-the-line view that the torso also becomes more erect from a down-the-line view. So this is a highly engineered swing. Uh, this is exactly what you would want to see if you were trying to delay the opening of the shoulders through the strike as Hogan did. Uh, we don't really see this too much in modern swings these days because it's kind of a different approach, more uh, velocity oriented, but this is more acceleration oriented. <clears throat> so acceleration is what we would want to have through the strike with the ultimate objective of holding shaft flex through the strike. So this is how Ben Hogan did it. The head's moving all over the place exactly as it should, as George Knudsen said, Ben Hogan. So from an engineering standpoint here, what Hogan is really trying to do is delay the acceleration of the club. So with a much wider stance, a much more lateral move, Hogan was able to keep his shoulders closed much longer and deeper into the downswing. And then moving violently uh, with the torso rotation through the strike to keep pressure on the shaft, hold shaft flex through the strike, which is going to put more feel into the right hand, give him much better awareness of as where the, the club face is because he's going to be able to feel that in the hand. 
And also, the delayed shoulder opening creates a very beautiful open path for the arms and hands to move down into the slot on the downswing axis, what we call an advanced ball striking, the, the 430 line. Uh, great access there, so you're never going to get stuck or any of that. So the, all the stuck thing that you hear is because people are opening up too soon uh, from the top of the backswing, over accelerating and creating maybe more velocity but less acceleration. But because golf is a game of feel, acceleration creates pressure and feel into your hands, which then allows you to be able to feel exactly where the club face is at all times. And Hogan was obviously aware of this. And his objective was to hit the ball straight, laser straight, be able to feel exactly where the club head and the club face were at all times, spatial awareness. So again, Ben Hogan, a very highly engineered golf swing. The head's moving all over the place exactly as it should, based upon his lateral motion of his lower body and his legs. Uh, his stance width, wide stance to facilitate a much more lateral move opposed to a lot of the narrow stance stuff that's going on these days. Uh, trying to keep the head still uh, not really beneficial for a proper hitter swing. This is exactly what you want to be doing. The great Ben Hogan.